So friends, in this video, we are going to talk about PUJ obstruction. This PUJ is called pelvic ureteric junction. So as we can see, this is our kidney. And in the kidney, there is a pelvis. This is the area where the funnel starts to form. And then it joins the lower part, which is called the ureter. And this junction where the ureter and the pelvis, they are joining together. This is called the pelvic ureteric junction. Now, when a baby is forming inside the womb, what happens is the ureter starts to develop from down below. So the development of this tube, this pipe, which we call the urine pipe or the ureter, it happens from the bladder side upwards. And similarly, the funnel of the kidney that starts to from the above to down and they meet in between and they form this junction. But many times, unfortunately, this junction is formed very, very tight or sometimes they may not properly fuse and in that condition the kidney it starts to form urine but the urine does not drain into the urine pipe properly and this condition is then called PUJ obstruction. So typically the PUJ obstruction is detected when the maternal screening is going on. So this is called the antenatal checkup. So we know that pregnant women they have to go for an ultrasound on a regular basis where they first check the health of the mother and they check the health of the uterus, the amniotic fluid and the baby. So in this process itself, many times the radiologist is able to see that the kidneys are swelling up because the urine which is formed by the kidneys is not going down because of the blockage and this is called antenatal hydronephrosis which means that hydro means water nephrosis means in the kidney so the water is being collected in the kidneys and typically when we screen these patients when the baby is born then we monitor if the hydronephrosis resolves on its own otherwise we have to perform the repair of this condition and this repair is called pyloplasty also sometimes you know this condition is not detected at birth because either the blockage is not so severe at that time or the maternal ultrasound is not happening at proper intervals and when the baby grows up becomes a child or sometimes even as an adult there may be a presentation of it pain in the kidney side now when we do the ultrasound typically we feel that there may be a stone because it's that could be a cause of the pain but many times we are not able to see a stone but we only see the swelling in the kidney and the ureters are not swollen and we can see that the junction is narrow and in those cases we again label it as PUJ obstruction. Now to make sure that this obstruction is actually causing a damage on the kidney and it's not just a developmental defect or just an anomaly. It's not just a change in shape. So we get a scan which is called DTPA scan. These DTPA scans or nuclear scans or radionuclide scans, they help us to know whether the urine is properly draining from this kidney or whether it is getting blocked in this junction. And then based on that, we take a decision as to whether we can observe this patient or we really need to operate on this case and correct this junction. So we can redo this junction, we can remove this wrong junction and then again stitch the new junction together and that's called pyloplasty. Now typically this pyloplasty we do it with laparoscopic surgery and we just make two three holes in the abdomen and through that we put in our instruments in our camera and then we do the surgery. Now while the pyloplasty is being done we typically put a stent which is called a double G stent and this is kept inside for about six weeks. It requires two to three days of stay in the hospital after the surgery and we put in a drain or a tube and that is removed after we've removed the urine catheter. Now, after the surgery is done, the post-operative course is quite easy. There is no specific restriction as such and the patient has to follow up again for DJ stent removal. And then at three months and or at six months, we do a DTPA scan again to see whether the resolution has happened for the obstruction or not. Sometimes this obstruction is not very severe. So we know there's a partial blockage or there's a smaller obstruction. And we can also do an alternative treatment without the need of laparoscopic surgery, but by the natural route of urination, which is called endopilotomy. Now in this process, what we are doing is we are making a cut inside from the urinal pipe only and putting a stent which helps it to open up better. Now this endopilotomy also has very good success rates of about 70 to 80 percent if the kidney is functioning well enough and the site of the obstruction is quite clearly demarcated and there is no blockage due to any crossing vessel 
So many times what happens is that this POG obstruction also happens because there's a vessel which is actually crossing and causing pressure on the junction. So it's not just a narrowing, but the, the blood vessel itself causing a blockage. And in those cases, we cannot do an endopylotomy because we can make the vessel bleed or there can be a lot of bleeding from the vessel while we're cutting from inside. So we have to make sure before we go for an endopylotomy that we do some sort of a CT angiogram or a, a, an X-ray, a specialized X-ray where we can see the blood vessel crossing the junction. And only when we are sure that there is no blood vessel crossing this junction, we can offer our patients endopylotomy. Now, typically the swelling in the kidney can be because of other reasons also. It's not that just PUG obstruction is the only cause, but there can be some blockage down below in the ureter, which is called ureteric stricture, which can also lead to this picture. There could be a reflux of urine back into the kidneys, which is called vesicoureteric reflux, and that can also lead to the swelling in the kidneys. But in those conditions, we also find a dilatation of the ureter or widening of the ureter. And also in very small babies, when it's specifically on both the sides, then the posterior urethral wall, on which we've already made another video, which you can watch, that can also cause problems in the kidney, the dilatation in the kidney, and present like a PUG obstruction. So I hope that this video was useful to you with regards to PUG obstruction. And if you have any more queries around it, please feel free to mail us.